Hi, this is M, and today I thought I'd do another uh, eco printing with the iron because I have a couple things that I want to test, and the, especially the uh, these are Siberian iris, and this is pretty much about all I have left, and so I want to get a mo couple more papers done. I will link below or at the end of the video to uh, alumine papers and some other information about how to prep your papers to get started and also another eco printing I did uh, that you might be interested in. So all the frequently asked questions are there and I will uh, supply that information in the links. Today I am simply using uh, some I don't have any particular papers today. This is there's some watercolor paper, multimedia paper, uh, some blotter paper I used to sell for flower pressing that I don't really have any more for sale because it's gone. But I do have a, a couple packs left for, that I use once in a while. And then our little uh, tray of flowers. I probably won't do them all on camera today. But we will do a couple testers because there's a few things I want to see how they eco print for future reference. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, then let's get started. Make sure my iron's hot. This is one that auto shuts off. Uh, today I simply have my spray bottle of water, some coffee stain, or coffee, not coffee stain, but some coffee water, and some vinegar water, and the papers have already been alumed. This is. Uh, just my mat that I eco print on, as I said in another video. If you don't have one of these mats, just use something that is uh, heat safe cardboard, wood, anything. I do find, however, that the Teflon sheets are pretty uh, invaluable. So, the first thing we're going to do is we'll take, I'm going to take a piece of paper. This is a 9 by 12 sheet. I'm going to take the vinegar water since the paper's already almond, and I'm just going to get the paper. Damp. Now, in the other iron video I did here a couple weeks back, I actually dunked the papers in water rather than doing the spray, and I think that that might have made the papers a little too wet. I think this might uh, be a little bit better. The first thing I want to do is the iris, and I'm not going to press the whole stem because it's, it's pretty thick and I want to keep it uh, as thin of a layer as I can. So I'm just taking these off of the stem. And I'm going to do this in a landscape configuration. And we'll see how that works out. The water that I've got in the pan, I don't even have any vinegar in today. I think the last time I, I did a, a video demonstration, I said I had vinegar water. But I don't today. This is just straight. Uh, I think I'm going to do five. And then let's fill in with what do we want to test with. I think we're going to test with some, these are foxglove. Let's test with some foxglove, this filler, and see how that, how that does. And did I bring enough? Let's do a couple different configuration so they're not all going the same way. Some off the page. Another one. And is there any more in here? I'd like to put one over here. Maybe another one over here. Okay, and then I think because this paper is so white, let's put a little coffee water on here. I'm working on another video where I actually use the kettle to do uh, papers and you'll see where I sandwich those in bundles and have things on both sides. But when I'm doing just the single layer like this, we'll see how that goes. Now I'm going to spray this paper, vinegar water, put it on top. starting to roll, so we need to make sure get some more water on this side. That'll help to flatten it out. You can see how the, doing something on both sides helps to flatten it out. Spray a little bit more coffee water on the top of this. All right, so now we have our sandwich. Push it down a little bit. Get the other Teflon sheet. 
put it on top. And if you're not wanting to watch this whole process to see how long it takes or listen to my narrative, then just scrub along the timeline for the results. But I do know that there's some people that like the narrative and like to see how long it actually takes in real time. And so that's what this is about. I'm working around the camera, so if I bump it, forgive me. All right, I'm going to start at the middle. I've got the iron set on cotton. And I'm just going to do some light presses just to kind of help it get started. I am outside. I have any breeze that's happening at my back. I'm doing all my echo printing outside now. That way I'm not uh, breathing any of the fumes. The fumes aren't heading uh, at the camera, theoretically speaking. It's not too breezy out today. It's probably about... 9.30 in the morning, so the sun hasn't hit us yet. I was trying to get this done before the sun hit us because we'll have a little bit more uniform uh, lighting without part of it being sunny and shadowy and all that. Now you see how we can see some color showing through the, uh, the Teflon, so we know something's happening. I'm starting to push a little harder now. And it still seems like there's plenty of moisture under there, so I'm not gonna gonna add any more water yet. Gonna let it dry out a little. Now I might get ready to Yeah, I can't believe how quickly the season's going for for things. If iris were here and just like that they're going to be gone and there's been so much rain that pressing and eco printing and all that has been uh, not as the window of opportunity hasn't been as great. Okay so these are these are holding together enough that we can turn it over now. If you turn it over too soon things will fall out. And then when we do the reveal, we'll see some, sometimes I rinse these, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how much debris on them. Sometimes uh, more flowers more so than leaves will get slimy. And the only way to get them off of there is to, is to rinse them. But then again, of course, your paper has to hold up. This is why I don't, you can use regular copy, copy paper but it's not going to hold up as well as, as if you use some sort of multi-purpose paper. And of course, water paper is going to hold up the best because it's made for water. But sometimes some water papers is so thick that if you want to use them for journal pages, it's almost too thick. Whereas if you want to use them for tags, tuck spots or something like that, then, it's, then, it, then it doesn't matter if it's a little bit thicker, at least in my opinion. Okay, now I'm starting to press harder. Now I want to get, uh, I don't know if you can hear the sizzle with where I've got the camera. But it's sizzling. So, pressure, pressure, pressure now. I'm standing back from the camera and back from the steam, even though the slight breeze is at my back. Because there is a lot of steam coming out from under there. Okay, let's take a peek. That's good color on that side. Lift up a little bit. Wow, that's really going green. Huh. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to
like I, I've said in other videos, I tend to be a little obsessive, but hey, you only get one shot at it. You're never going to get it. It, it. Everything's one of a kind, so if you want to try to get the best imprint possible, then just do what you feel comfortable with about how long it takes. The iron's nice because you get instant results, even though, you know, after a few minutes, but the, uh, the kettle or pot or something like that, you get a lot more layers, although I did a, like I say, I did a kettle the other day, which I'm going to post a reveal on that here <laughs> at some point. I did, f I counted them, I did 43 sheets, and it took me basically almost the whole day. It took three hours to build the pile you know, between gathering the flowers and making the pile, and then of course a couple of hours for the for the eco part of it in the kettle, and then, and I'll talk more about that in that video. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, let's turn it over one more time, and uh, and then of course taking the bundle apart and rinsing certain ones and laying them out and drying, and the, and the whole process you pretty much eat up a whole day. It's time consuming. And it eats up, um, excuse me, excuse me, little ant. Uh, it eats up the, uh, it eats up a lot of flowers and leaves. So, one thing about it, if you're doing a quantity, you've got to have access to a lot of, uh, of items. Okay, I think we'll call this good. And I'm going to do more of these, but those will be off camera. So we'll just do the test for the different things that I have in the pan, and then the rest I'll do off camera. Okay, the sizzling is gone. Let's take a review. All right, and now... I'm going to, hot, 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 I'm going to roll, and these seem to be coming off good enough that I don't think I'm going to need to rinse. And as I said in the other video, the nice thing about this is I can just throw them on the ground over there and it doesn't matter. Okay, there we go. I think I'm just going to add a little more coffee water to these whiter parts here, just to darken them up a little bit. And other than that, we're good to go. I'm going to go set these on the lawn so that they can dry. Normally I would have brought out cardboard, but I forgot, so unfortunately my husband just mowed, so <laughs> we, we can use the lawn and, and hopefully not get too many uh, things sticking to it. Let me bring this one closer to the camera. I forgot to do it with the other one so you can see how that turned out. And if you're going to going to get this stuff off. It's easier when there's still some moisture because once it dries you almost have to get it wet again to get, you know, if you want to get the stuff off. And again, I'm going to put a little bit more coffee water on some of these lighter areas and just dab it in. Bring this up to the camera. Anyway, you want to get this off while it's still damp, the debris. Hopefully it's not blurring out. See how beautiful that is? Okay, put this on the ground. What do we want to do now? Let's take the vinegar water. I see I'm at 14 minutes, so I must have spent a long time on that. 
we want to do? Let's do some pansies. I'm going to cut the back off. I'm going to lay them down. I only have so many that I brought over, so we'll do some, and then we'll fill, we'll do other kinds of filler to test out how how those things work. I can't remember what color we're going to get from Pansy, or if we're going to get any. I've done them before, but I think it was a different kind. Hopefully, I have one more. So we've got five, and no, I don't. Okay, um, let's bring these over on this. Oops, bring these over on this side. And then I'm going to take <clears throat> take this apart and just uh, bring them off the page. I'll do kind of like a half and half. And then let's see. This is probably going to impart a. I don't know what it's going to part. What kind of? Let's do some. Let's do some lupin florets and see what those do. We've got blue and pink, so we'll give those a try. Oh, there's a, oh, was that two bumblers mating? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he caught that. <laughs> they were, they were ruckusing around. Well, who knows? All right, so we'll do this half with this. And then... We will do what on the other half? What color do we want? I want to see how these do. These are some kind of, they smell like pineapple. They smell wonderful. They, they should hopefully give us a, some sort of I'm hoping some sort of reddish color. If not, they'll probably go yellow. So let's see how that goes. I hope everybody's doing good today. What day is it? This is, uh, <laughs> what day is it? Thursday. I'm wanting to cut some of the bulk off there, so I'm cutting the stems. Do I have any more? Yeah. Okay. Let's put a couple of those there. I think I'm going to fill in with some geranium. Now I know these buds, excuse me for bumping the camera, I know the buds work good. So let's put some buds in there. Sometimes the, the, the thing that takes the longest with ink printing is also setting up the arrangement if you want to arrange, which in this case I do. Let's throw in a couple petals here and there for some color. little wash type situation. And then we'll put the top on and get started. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm going to spray a little coffee water on. Get another sheet of paper. And put it on top. Put our mat on top. And iron. Hopefully, we still have some heat. That's got to heat back up again. I'll spare you my rant. I've ranted in every video I've ever done about these. Dog on irons that still shut off right away. And 
and I know better. I should have jiggled it before while I was doing the arrangement. Time next year. And the reason why I am not editing these is because otherwise I wouldn't get them posted. Now, YouTube does have a thing where you can clip out some stuff. So I'm at 20 minutes right now. So if this video gets shorter, maybe I will do that. Edit out some of it. Basically, it's it's just real generically basic. Uh, you, just, you just pick a little section and then you can cut it out. I don't. I don't think I'll have to look. I don't think they have any speed. You know where you can speed it up and do do a fast forward situation. I think after this we might do. What else do I have that I wanted to? Yeah, there's a. We'll do another sampler page, and then that'll we'll probably call it good for for what we're videoing today. Now we've got some heat. You can see the steam coming now. Now we're in business. thing about the iron is it takes so long that the um, the heat press doesn't take as long because you've got more force and more uniform heat in other words the whole plate and presses down at once you don't have to move it around to different parts of the page and so it's a lot quicker but if you don't have a heat press and you don't want to take the time to do the kettle and you just need a couple pages and want to do something quick this is this is the best so it all depends on what you want to do what your needs are how much access you have to botanicals because if you only have access to a few botanicals then then that's all you need And the other thing is, once you know if something's going to impart color, then you can do more prioritizing in the kettle. And, okay, I know this imparts really good color, so, so I'm going to do more of that in the kettle. Because I actually think that the kettle also sometimes can give a, uh, a better or more distinctive print. If the bundle's super tight, and just depending depending upon factors, but again, everybody's different. Everybody's got different paper, different botanicals. Let's see how this is looking. Oh, I know what I forgot to bring over. I wanted to try some. Uh, maybe we'll do that on a different video. Now look at how dry that is. So that's. That's dry. When you see this paper white like that, it's way too dry. Let's get some more action going on. Okay, now we got something happening. This iron is just, uh, it's just got a, a Teflon bottom, so it's really easy to clean. Just take a sponge and some water and wipe it off. And of course the Teflon mats are easy to clean, so the cleanup is simple. 
so that's nice. And this table that I'm using is, excuse me for bumping the camera, this table that I'm using is just one I got from the department store, didn't cost too much. And it's plastic, hard plastic, that's why you want to protect it. So I imagine it's super hot iron sitting on it for a while I can mar it. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, okay, we're getting better now. Some more action going on. See, that really helped. Now let's turn it over. And then uh, let me spray a little moisture down there first. I'm going to spray a little moisture on here. doing the other side. Except the only thing about editing out in YouTube, and it could just be my imagination because, you know, <laughs> sometimes your mind plays sticks on you. But it seemed like the quality, because what they do is they cut it out and then they make a copy. I guess they do that in case you want to undo it. And it just seems like the quality of the copy that they make isn't quite as good. And again, it could just be my imagination. So I'm just afraid if I clipped out a bunch of spots that the quality might be affected. So I will debate that when I sit down at the computer and decide whether to post this or not, and what to do about it. Okay, let's take a look. Now, I did talk about in the other video about putting the iron right on here, but like I said in there, is that you can, but once the paper starts to dry and get to a certain point, it can, even though this is anti-stick, it can start sticking. And also my iron's dirty right now, so I'm getting dirty stuff on there. So I just tend to stick with the... The... Uh, Teflon, let's take a peek. Ooh, oh wow. Those are the pansy. Look at it. Ooh. Well, it looks like we're going to probably just go ahead and pull it back. All right, so we've got a lot of white space in here, so I am going to spray the coffee water on there and let that absorb in for a minute. So this was that thing that's, that I said smelled, <laughs> smelled like uh, pineapple. Now here's what I'm talking about where it starts getting kind of slimy. Sometimes when it gets slimy it's hard to, to get the debris off of there cleanly. So we'll see. How that goes if I feel like I need to rinse it or not. I prefer not to. See, the, and the geranium goes really slimy. Can you see that? How slimy that is? So, yeah, I probably do need to rinse it. And so, what I'm going to do normally the pan that I've got these flowers in is what I, what I use, but it is full of stuff. So let's see if I can rinse it off this way. Here, I've never done this before, but we'll find out. Something new. If you need to rinse, and you just basically you just get it wet enough that instead of it being so slimy that it's sticking to the paper, you've got enough moisture that you can slide it off in essence is what we're doing. And that did seem to work. That seemed to work. This to get that off of there. 
Okay, so there's another technique that I hadn't tried before. And it might be even better because although the paper's wet, it's not as sopping wet as if I had submerged it in water. Um, this side's okay. This will make a good background, but it's not nearly as um, as defined as I would for just being a focal point. And maybe in a kettle or under the heat press you'd get something better. So hopefully, now there's one side of the pansy. We'll see about the other side of the pansy in just a second when we take that off. That was the back side. And then this is the front side. And again, very, very slimy. So that was the front side. So that, yeah, that, that was okay. It's all right. Sometimes if you make a little pile with your stuff, you can use that as a kind of a magnet to scrape it off. And then I'm going to take the water, try using that again as a, some of that, see how that's helping to get, get that off of there. Yeah. All right, so there, that's better. Okay, let's bring this up to the camera so you can get a closer look. So I'm happy with the pansies. And then there's the other. Okay. It'd be helpful to have a, a squeegee to wipe this, this thing off. Alrighty, so what do we want to do now? I think we'll take. Let's fold this one in half because it's pretty big for the iron. This is a piece of watercolor paper. Let me get the iron so that it doesn't shut off on us. Vinegar water, vinegar water, picking up some of the color from the mat, that's fine. All right, let's do some yellow. Some yellow and orange. Well, I know these go rusty, or, uh, rusty. This is a uh, bitten, and I know it goes a rusty orange, if I remember correctly. They don't they don't stay yellow. At least they they have never haven't for me before. These also press good. The uh, the iris that we did they don't they don't press well. And neither did the geraniums aren't that great for pressing. And then I, oh, oh I know what I want to do, because this will probably be the last one I want to do on camera. Let's take a look at carnation, and I'm going to take it out of the sheath. And I'm going to drop a few flourishes around. I just want to see what kind of color they impart. So we'll check that out. See what happens. And then I have another carnation. I don't think I've eco printed carnations before. 
so we'll find out together what happens. And do I have any more? Yeah, I have one more. Ooh, action's starting to happen in the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty quiet out here usually. This is a uh, this is a uh, tourist area. So on the winter, it's very quiet. And in the summer, there's a lot of activity. Now this is marigold. And it will, go, uh, I don't know, I think we'll save the marigold. I think I'll just fill in with a couple of more of these. Just for color and the paper. All right. We pretty filled in? I think so. Some coffee water. All right, that might even be too, too much water. Just scoop a little off of there. Sopping wet, sock, soaking wet. Still have heat. Okay, yes, we do. Now, as I mentioned, this is, I think, watercolor paper. So it's thicker than what we just used. Sun's starting to come over here now. Let's take a look. See if we need more water. Yeah, look at how dry that is. Let's put some coffee water on it. sizzle going on now. Now I'm pressing harder. getting hot out here. I'm going to have to start peeling off layers. I've got my undershirt, my other thing on. I've got my Pendleton on. I've got a, a what do they call those? Fleece vests. <laughs> All right, let's spray. I'm getting a little color through there now. Not as much as we're going to want to get but at least it's a start. I'm on cotton. What would happen if I turn it up to linen? That's the hottest setting on my iron. See if I burn the flowers before I do anything else. There's the sun.
Well, I don't know if you want to hang with me for one more piece of paper or not, but the one other thing I have in here that we haven't done yet is um, some GM and some of the uh, some GM and then the marigold florets and bachelor button perennial bachelor button florets. There's another paper that I'm going to do. I'll probably do it on camera just so that I, I can look back and refer if I forget. Oh, what did that do? So, fast forward or hang with. I think we'll do one more paper. Let's get this one. Take a peek. Okay, it's looking, looking better. Yeah, okay. so hopefully that heat's kicking in whatever the change or difference would be between the cotton and the linen it should be kicking in by now Now, someone said in my video, why don't you wear a respirator? Um, it's, you know, I, if you're concerned about it, it's a good idea. I try to keep away from the, the smoke. I, I, I don't think I personally feel it. I do it often enough at this point, and I'm doing it outside now with a breeze at my back to where I'm really going to worry about it. But if you're going to do it a lot, or you're indoors, or you think you're going to breathe it, or, or you're sensitive, yeah, you could use a respirator. Not a bad idea. I do have one that I, I use for certain things that I do, like certain kinds of resins. I was doing a resin one day, and I couldn't smell it, and I was not wearing a respirator, and I was inside, although I had... I had uh, the windows open, and the fire, uh, you know, those things you have in your house, went off. Well, I guess we'll open it now. I'm going to spray some coffee water on some of these dry parts. Now that's pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. See how slimy these are if we need to rinse. Anyway, the point being that the, the fire, uh, the, you know, like the first alert thingy, it went off. And it really kind of surprised me because I couldn't smell anything. And it was one of those quick drying resins. Um, I don't remember what, 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 which one, three, two, five, smooth on or I don't know something, but it was one of those ones that dry or that sets in about three or four minutes. And uh, <laughs> after that experience, I opened up all the doors and I was fanning a smoke alarm because my husband was upstairs. It's like, shut up, shut up, shut up! I'm yelling at the smoke alarm because <laughs> I didn't want to have to hear his wrath if he came down going, "What's that going on?" So I will never, I don't know. I'm, well, first of all, I'm not going to use that resin anymore because I wasn't successful with it. What was I resining? I can't even remember now. I wasn't successful with it anyway. So, uh, watch for that. All right, let's bring this up to the camera. But the point being is, uh, yeah, 
something like that, I, I would wear my respirator. Okay, I can't see in this, you know how when the sun hits your, I'm using that cell phone. I have no idea if you can see this or not. I'm going to just hope that you do. That's really pretty. That came out good. Let's see, what was this? This was, this was the uh, Lupin. And the, what did we use for filler there? Oh, that was the, the uh, carnation. And then you can see how, what these guys do. Really nice. All right. We'll do one last one if you want to hang in. I'm going to use the same kind of paper. I'm going to fold it in half. Start with vinegar water. Do the iron, make sure it doesn't shut off on us so we don't have to wait for the heat to get on. Okay. I guess you can see. Uh, we're going to do GM. That's GM. And I think this goes in orangey. I don't know. I can't remember. We'll find out. It seems like the dominant colors in eco printings are your rusts, your yellows, that kind of uh, that that uh, bluish, purplish, greenish color. It's real hard to get true blues, true reds, at least in my experience. True greens. Let's put some of these going off the page. And then I wanted to fill in with, do I have any more jam? Yeah, here's one. And then, any more? No. I want, this is a perennial bachelor button. I want to see what, what the florets do. And the sheath is super hard. You can't press the sheath. And I wouldn't want to try to eco print the sheath either because I think it'd rip the paper before before anything else. Now I don't know if I have another one of these, so I want to. Uh, where do I want to put this? Probably here. Let's spread some of this around. Let's spread some around here. some around here move some of that up now we're going to fill in with something that I know goes super rusty and that's those marigolds they're going to give us a, a real rust flavor So if you're into rust, then get some marigold florets. Alright, I think we're just about done here. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, I think that takes care of everything that was in this pan that I wanted to test out for the camera today. Um, okay, spray a little coffee water.
Okay. Now this side's gotten all dried out while we're putzing around. All right. Someday I'll find the time to actually do some, uh, hopefully, <laughs> to actually do some things with these. I was looking at my playlist last night going, well, I sure have a lot of videos where I'm doing things with paper, but I'm not show doing anything with, you know, showing about any actual demonstration videos of doing things. And I do do things with them. I do cards, and I do bookmarks, and I do gift enclosures, and I do pictures under glass, and I do tags and journal stuff, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just finding time to, to do. Film. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, let's see, very dry. We want to get more... I noticed the watercolor paper seems to absorb a lot of, uh, well, I don't know if absorbs the right word, absorb or eats up. It needs to be start out wetter than that other paper that we used at the very beginning. Okay, I gotta peel off some layers here while we're waiting for you. This is too much. Okay. I'm a tank top person. It's always my first layer that I put on in the morning. It's a tank top. And then everything else gets layered on top of that. I mean, those of you that watch many of my videos know that I've said that I'm older. I would be considered a senior citizen. And, uh, one of the, well, I used to wear tank tops when I was younger, too. I've always been a tank top person. And, but now that I'm older, one of the nice things about tank tops is because I still get hot flashes. Do you think I would have been over that ages ago? But they seem to be cyclical. We'll go for a month or two and nothing happens, and then all of a sudden, ugh. But the nice thing about tank tops and over layering is you can just peel, put, peel on and peel off as you need it. And sometimes you gotta, gotta get down to nothing on your arms and just try to give yourself as much. Uh, as least of layers of clothing as you can possibly get away with. But then you want to be able to layer quickly because for those of you that haven't reached this age yet, and I don't know about other older ladies, but I find that <clears throat> after a really bad hot flash session, I get the chills. And so therefore, I have to peel off and then I have to I have to uh, put on. So I can't imagine I'm the only one like that. But yeah, this is just one extreme and another. And it isn't just at night. I remember when I was growing up before I got old. It, oh, man, the night, the hot flashes at night. Well, it isn't just the night. It could be any time. And then at night, yeah. And it always seems to happen around a certain time, about 3 o'clock. I'll start having to peel the covers off, and I'll, I'll wake up, and I'll go, oh, I know what time it is. And sure enough, it's pretty much like clockwork, 3 o'clock.
Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's take a... <clears throat> let me get away from the... the I think I want to do one more. Let's just do one more quick on each side. Since this is the last one I'm going to do on camera. And I'm not one to be afraid to talk about things like that. I mean, some people might hear me say, oh, she's talking about hot flashes. Well, you know, people get them. Half of the, half of the world gets them. And why not? Why not talk about it? Find out if you're the only one or not the only one. I'm going to try not to get crass or anything, but it's a natural thing. I don't see any hurt in talking about it. If someone heard me talking about going, oh, how what you doing talking about that? Now, if you're a guy watching this, you might feel weird, but... Okay, it's, uh... And if you are a guy watching this, welcome. I appreciate your viewing. Now, this is very dry in here. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to wet that. I'm going to go straight in with the iron and hope it doesn't stick. Just to get a little color in there. Okay, let's see if that did anything. A little bit. So, GM. That's cool. See, it's interesting how, I guess you can see, how it went kind of this purplish, kind of a purplish green, and then it, and then the watercolor effect that emanated from it is green. And then, as I said, these uh, marigolds go very reliably kind of a orangey rust. And then this, this uh, bachelor button kind of went I don't know, bluish, purplish, green. So those, those are okay. This paper's dry enough, and these aren't so slimy as that I don't need to really rinse this paper. But yeah, that's that's good. Now this is the back side of the gym. really like this paper. This turned out good. Well, I think they all turned out pretty good. This one's got a lot of excitement going on. Okay. Gonna do a little bit more coffee water just while it dries. Let's bring this up to the camera so you can get a closer look. It's weird. See this little white dabba do? Well, what this goes with that? Just put my hand in there so I can see where we're at. Can you see that? Okay, that's it. Get ready to turn the camera off now. Thank you for tuning in. I'm not going to bring these all back to the camera and do an end of the video thing. Uh, I'll just have to have to leaf through. I'm afraid because they're all on the ground and they're still damp. So thank you for tuning in. I hope, uh, hope this was uh, something that you enjoyed and are scrubbed along the timeline. And thank you. I already said that. Okay, Emily, shut the camera down now. You have a wonderful day.